All right, how am I gonna plug into shore power and connect to any voltage and any frequency anywhere in the world in my DIY Expedition Camper? Well, with this big battery system and also all the different DC to DC converters in both 12 and 24 volt systems, I have a good solution to how to do this. It's very efficient, very compact, relatively low cost, and takes a very little space and allows me to connect to any voltage and frequency anywhere in the world. What's my plan to charge the batteries from shore power in my camper from any voltage around the world? It's actually this right here, the Victron Phoenix Smart Charger. And the reason why I'm using this versus their other products such as a Skyla, which is very large and heavy, or an isolation transformer, which is another way, which is also very heavy and fairly large as well. Plus always puts out a lot of heat being a transformer, it's always got some conversion losses going on. And the other option would be something such smaller, like their blue smart chargers, which I could just simply, or more or less a little portable one, and even waterproof, I could even put, hook it up underneath the camper and just just run the wires from the from the charger up into the batteries in here those ones are pretty small and they don't really charge at a high rate that that's one of the main reasons why not to use that generally they're also kind of really not just pretty small but be, i have to change kind of the plugs on each end of that this one because I'm, I'm wiring myself i can put in whatever plug i want here it's a standard a c13 515 for 15 amp or, or 20 for 20 amp plug that can go right in here it's even got a beautiful little clip that goes right over it so this just plugs all the way in really nicely this clip goes really beautifully over that wire holds it in so it's got a really nice way to retain it and that's beautiful and the other big advantage of this is it's 25 amps at 24 volts it also is already set up for lithium ion batteries which i have and it's fully programmable it's also got bluetooth so i can go ahead and connect to it that way don't necessarily have to use the wire it's also got a nice little relay here so i can control that relay based on different configurations to turn something on or off and I can also remotely control it as well turning it on or off by that remote control right there so those are some real nice advantages with that the other big advantage this has it has three outputs so I can charge three different battery banks now they're all going to charge at the same voltage but I can actually provide a different connection point to each one of my batteries so I can have a direct connection to this so that way if I do isolate a battery pair for some reason or another I can still charge the other two from this as well when I'm connecting to shore power and of course I'm going to wire this up so that if I do have to isolate the batteries for any reason for safety or anything else for working on them when I disconnect it regardless when they're short power those batteries now no longer be able to be beat be charged and so it's also a really compact form factor it does weigh about six pounds so it's fairly heavy but much lighter than some of those other options i mentioned like the skylo or the isolation transformer and it's also quite compact you know this is roughly about nine and a half to ten inches wide by probably about six or seven inches tall so it's a pretty compact form factor the depth there is about maybe four inches or so. You can pull up those specs, of course, on VictoronEnergy.com and look at their specs. It's also quite affordable relative to some of those other options. Still pretty expensive, but still a lot cheaper than the Skylar or something else, which is also hard to come by. And the nice thing about these NEMA plugs here is I can actually simply buy whichever one I need for another voltage, or I can just simply buy this right here and just cut the cord and run my own power out to basically a 230 volt short connection so that I can have this connected up in just about in Europe or just about anywhere else in the world or just put a converter on that to get to the other plug style. And this will automatically convert between 50 and 60 hertz and all the way down from I believe 90 to 260 volt, 85 to 265 volts. So it's got a very broad voltage range so delhi down to 85 volts grants probably not really going to charge much even the manual says it until you get above 90 or even 100 volts but either way at least it's still going to at least do something and meaning connect and start doing some charging even in places where the voltage is very low and very much at the end of a grid where you can see that down to that 95 to 100 volts ac in parts of like say central or south america where i've seen that before so that'll be a, a big advantage having that wide voltage range and auto adjusting and again fairly for, compact form factor also about 96 percent efficiency so really high efficiency and so i can bury this into a cabinet here and just use some existing material to screw this up in there and then start getting this wired up. And the benefit of having this already having a plug right here, these are cheap and ready to come by in different lengths and so forth and different plugs on each side, is now I can actually plug it in right now to my shore power here in my garage. 
while I'm building this out, it can have the charger charging the batteries, so they're keeping them charged, and I can run all my electronics, such as my light and everything else, off of that. So as I get things connected, they'll all start being connected and running off my batteries here, and this will, being connected to shore power, be able to keep those charged up while I'm working on the camper here. So that's a really nice advantage, and then I can just simply convert this plug later on and wire directly to a couple different shore connections for different voltages or different plug styles in different parts of the world. So there you go. Really quick, easy way. I think it's pretty inexpensive and compact way to get multi-voltage, multi-frequency, basic global shore power chargeability anywhere in the world because there's those times we're going to be camped out somewhere in a place where it's going to be very cold, it's going to be very cloudy, solar is not going to do much and running a lot of heat or something like that or hot and running a lot of air conditioning and so it'd be really nice to be able to be connected and at least be able to get a charge to cover all or at least most of the campers electrical consumption and probably most of it or all of it over 24 hour period at least most of it a period so at least keep those batteries up at their the right voltage so they're not wearing it down when they camp somewhere for a long period of time where you do have shore power connections such as parked like in the shade at someone's house or or something like that so i think that's a great solution a great option especially in the victron brand being bluetooth and everything else build but interconnect all right it's going to be a really tight fit I'm using a spare piece of high-density polyethylene left over from my camper van project from quite a while back that I had sitting around, and so that's why I already got some holes and stuff drilled into it. But what I'm going to do here is I cut it down to a size that should just squeeze into this space. And there we go, the Phoenix Smart Charger is now installed. Really simple, I just used some blue plastic HTPE, it's quarter inch, so I just simply slid into the, the, the tracks or the grooves here in this 10 series AD20. So I just simply had to basically bend it a little bit, and compress it, get it to right just the right width. So it is locked in there. You can see I'm trying to move it, I cannot move it side to side. It's actually locked down or held in place vertically by this corner bracket here, this gusset of corner bracket on that side. And then just simply up here, just a, a corner bracket right there, just a little corner bracket that's not screwed into the HEP, doesn't need to be. It's just screwed into the 8020 profile and that holds it in place. You can see if I try to move this up and down, I cannot. I cannot move it side to side. I can't move it down. It is solid in here. So it's got a really nice simple mount, very lightweight and simple. And now I can access all my wiring and stuff down here above the Lynx distrib distributors. And that will run down behind the Lynx distributors and then underneath my wire chase to get to where each one of the batteries are. Right now it's a little bit of a mess in here because I've got all my different wires and stuff for my shunt, my, my temperatures and all that stuff. Basically I'll wire it to this side of the remote battery switches. Each one of my batteries has one of these remote battery switches. The battery comes in on one side and then goes on to the links on the other. I'll wire it on the switched side so that way if I ever want to make it, the battery have no more power, disconnect it from the whole system, including from the charger and stuff and so forth, I ha I'll have it on this side. Of course, I'll put it on the top side of this lug because the lug is what's going to carry most of power, whereas the charger is going to have much less power. So that's a nice spot out of the way. I have drawers that go in here and those drawers let's make sure they just stop right here all right just have that kind of depth and so that way it's at the back of those drawers all i'm losing is really about two or three inches at the depth of those drawers and they're already really deep drawers as they are they're almost 24 inches i think they're 24 inches without that there so now they'll be about 22 or so inches deep plenty deep really good depth drawers and that'll also have nice heat dispersion because i have full airflow from the bottom and all the way up the top here this is a vent line for that water tank so all this air can still get around that and through that this is a good spot it's also very close to where my shore power connection is which ends up coming in down from down here and so that's key of course and it also right near my inverter here which also has my shore connection other shore connections actually two of them so i'm actually gonna have three shore power connections one 120 volt on each side so there's my two i'm gonna ha probably have one on the back as well the rear the bumper i'll be able to easily connect to shore power on either side or in the back of the camper so that makes it really nice and of course now with multi reeled voltage support anywhere in the world i can plug in a shore power and or and or plug in you know anywhere in the world and this will go ahead and do its thing to charge each of the batteries individually from its
And there you go, and it's working great to take 120 volts, and of course it'll take voltage and frequency from all the parts of the world and keep my batteries charged up. So it's a really nice setup. I'll share a little more coming up on my different shore power connections as well as also some more installation of the exterior storage and some other unique features I've got going on there, including also a lot of other items to share on this DIY Expedition Camper Build. Thanks so much for watching, subscribing, and sharing with others.